Hello and welcome to Microsoft Excel tutorial from ITME and this is tutorial number 82 and in this video we are going to talk about macros so let's get started. So macros basically all about automation so whatever actions you perform repeatedly daily weekly or monthly you can automate it with using macros. So macro is nothing but a sequence of steps that you want to execute on a single click. Now what are the different ways to create macros? So two different ways are available. The first and the easiest way is to simply record a macro switch on the recorder, perform some activity and stop the recorder and Microsoft Excel will automatically generate some code for you. Second option is basically for the guys, those who know computer programming, they can write the code in a programming language called as Visual Basic for Applications or VBA in an editor called as VBE Visual Basic Editor that is by default installed along with Microsoft Excel and then you can execute those code. But in this video, we are going to talk about simply recording and executing the macro because writing the code by hand is completely more advanced topic. Maybe in future, I'll be creating some separate series on Visual Basic for applications. So let's get started and see how to work with macros. So all you need to do is go onto the view tab and there the last command group, you're gonna see macros. Click on the down arrow, you're gonna find over there, we have record macro using which you can start recording the macro. We also have a dedicated tab available for developers, but that is hidden by default, I can right click in the ribbon and click on customize the ribbon. And then under the main ribbon tabs, you're gonna see we have a developer option available. I can select this and click on okay. Now you're gonna see that we have one more tab appearing by the name developer. We have a bunch of different options related to coding, add-ins, controls, XML. And also you're gonna see in the status bar, we are having a button over here that says start recording. This is the button that you can toggle on or off. I can right click and this is the option using which you can switch it on or off macro recording button. So this is how we have these different options available. So let's see how to start recording a macro. So I'll go ahead and click on record macro and that gives me this record macro dialog box. Now what it is asking over here is that what name you want to give to this macro as a single workbook can have multiple macros each and every macro should have a unique name. Now there are certain rules related to macros. So if I type in over here, hello world with a space in between, I press enter, it gives me error and then you are getting some rules. The rules are that each and every macro name should start with a letter or an underscore and it should not include any space or any other special character and which should not conflict with any of the existing names. So if you have given a name to a cell or to a sheet, that name should not be used in the macro name. So I'll go ahead and click on OK and delete this space. And then option we have over here is that what is the shortcut key you want to assign. So whatever shortcut key you are giving over here, just make sure that is not conflicting with any of the existing standard shortcuts. So if I type in N over here where control N is the shortcut for creating new workbook, that will be clashing with this control N so better. If I press shift N, so the shortcut would become control shift N to execute the macro. And it's your preference if you wanna use this macro quite frequently, you can associate a shortcut for that. Next option we are getting is where you gonna store this macro you want to store in this workbook. So if you want that, whosoever having this workbook should be able to use this macro, you can keep in this workbook. But if I go ahead and select this option, store in personal macro workbook, this will be stored in a hidden workbook on your machine. So in that case, what would happen is that you will be able to use this macro in all of your workbooks, but you will not be able to share with other different people. The third option is a new workbook. As you can get from the name is gonna create a new workbook and that macro will be stored in that workbook. So I will go ahead and with the default option in this workbook and you can type in some description over here that what is the purpose of this macro and other stuff. So I'll go ahead and click on OK. At this point now the recording is started. Whatever activity you will do on the sheet, you type in something, you do some formatting, you add more sheets, for everything code will be generated. So let's type in over here, hello world. And then I click in over here, I go on and do some formatting. Let's say I want to make it larger. I want to make the font color background different. I want to make the foreground color different. I want to merge the cells. So I have these different operations I have performed. 
and that's all what i want to do and i want to stop the recording so i can click on stop button over here or i can go on to the developer tab and i can click this stop button now the macro recording is done now how to execute this macro you just need to let me first of all create this new sheet and then i want to execute that macro over here so i just need to go on to macros over here or from the view menu i can go to macros view macros and this macros window is going to show you the list of all the macros you have created and there you get the button to execute the macro you can step into step by step execution of the macro or edit the macro deleting all the different options are there and you can also go to options to change the shortcut or description anytime so now i want to run this macro i'll click on run and you can see within no time that activity happened now you might be thinking that Zishan, I can do all these things using copy and paste. Why should I go ahead with this macro? Definitely you can do with copy and paste, but the problem with copy and paste is you need to go to the source location and copy it and then paste it. So it may be a different sheet or different workbook. Second thing is macro is not all about just typing content and formatting. Macro can also store information like when you create a sheet or add a column, remove a column, add a row, remove a row, any kind of operation you're performing, it can do recording for that thing. So this is all what we have now. Let's go ahead and save this workbook. So I'll go ahead and click save and I'm gonna save on to my Excel folder and let's give it name. macro demo and click save and now you are getting a warning over here that this file contains VB project that is visual basic project and you cannot save in a macro free workbook and to save the macro you must save it as a macro enabled file so I'll go ahead and click no and from here file type I'm gonna select the second option that says Excel macro enabled workbook and then click save and the book got saved and let's go ahead and close this window and you can see in the file explorer we have this file got created the icon is different you are seeing an exclamation mark uh, as a representation of warning because this macro could be malicious code now if i go to properties you can see the file extension of the macro enable files is xlsm where the normal excel files is xlsx now if i open this macro workbook again now you are getting a security warning macros have been disabled and enable the content or not so as i have created this macro i trust this but if you are getting from some third party it, it could contain some malicious code so i'll go ahead and click enable content and macro got enabled so now you'll be able to run the macro now if you want to configure these options later to macro security you can go on to developer tab and click on macro security and here we have different options you want to disable all the macros you want to disable macros with notification as we got the notification over here or you want to disable all the macros except the digitally signed macros so if anyone has digitally signed the macro it will be enabled by default the last option is the least secure option that says enable all the macros so i will go ahead with the default one and click cancel so these are the different settings available for macro security now you might be thinking that what are the different ways to execute a macro the only way as of now we talked about is you go to macros and select the macro and click run other option is that you can add it to the ribbon i can click in over here and i say more commands go on to show the macros only and then you're going to see over here we have a macro i can click on add and click on ok and then it gets added over here you can also definitely add to the ribbon also but i'm adding it to the quick access toolbar so now let's execute it one time more i go on over here and click on this button and macro got executed so this is how we can do this macro now the problem with this is that this customization you have done this is on your machine if anyone else get this workbook he's not gonna see this button over here so what we want is that some kind of interface within my workbook and when i click on those buttons this action should happen so for that purpose what we can do is we can add a command button on the control section of the developer tab we have insert when i click on that we have a bunch of different controls available and uh, i'll go ahead with the default button that is says form control and i click on this and i can draw it on the page on the sheet and now it's asking you that 
what should happen when you click this button you want to create a new macro or you want to associate this button with an existing macro so i want it to execute hello world code and click on ok so now what will happen is that you know i can see that we have this button created by default it has got the text button one i can type in hello world and this got renamed so anytime you want to change anything so just press control and click on this button and then you can resize it you can change the text of this or you can simply right click and then you can say i want to edit the text of this if you simply left click on this then this macro will get executed so if i click on this and you can see that macro got executed so this is how macro works now i will go ahead and show you what is the code that got generated by excel for the macro so let's go ahead with macro and then we have this edit button when i click on that it's going to open a separate window that is called as visual basic editor this is visual basic editor so here you can see we have project explorer where we have different sheets and modules available and in this module one it has written this code we have property window and this is the code that you are seeing so you can see it's basically a subroutine it says sub and the name of the macro and these are the some comments and then we have this code that got generated when we were performing those actions so it's not pretty difficult to understand you can see from here it says range of c1 dot select that's in simple language means that select the cell c1 then we have the next line that says active cell dot formula r1 c1 equals to hello world so that means that whatever cell is active set the text of that cell to hello world so this is how what we have the code it is changing the font size and a lot of other stuff is going on that whatever we did during the recording selecting the cells from c1 to e1 and then we perform the merge operation so this is what the code we have and anytime you can come back and you can do the modification if required and now i'll go ahead and close this window so this is how we record a macro now what if if you want to have relative macro so what i mean to say is that you might have seen that whenever i click this button it always go to the same location c1 and perform some activity sometimes it happens that we want to have the relative macro that wherever my cursor is whatever cell is active perform the activity over there so in that case we can use relative macros so let's say if i have some sheet over here of the student's attendance and then what i want over here is that when i click on the button it should enter over here present or absent so this thing i want to do with the macro so what i can do is that i want to say that now whenever you do the recording of the macro use relative referencing that, that is in reference to the active cell so if i click in this over here it's a toggle button you can toggle it on or off and then if i say record macro and then i'm going to name it mark present and click on ok and now record is on i can say capital p for present and press enter key and that's it what i want and click stop recording next put recording i want to have for absent i'll again click record macro mark absent click on ok and i type in over here a for absent and press enter key and stop recording so these are the two activities i have performed now i want to add a button over here to this sheet so if i click on this button it would mark as absent or present so for that i just need to insert buttons over here so i'll click insert over here and draw the button over here and i want to associate it with mark present click on ok and now i want to type in text present second button i want to insert over here for absent mark absent click on ok and this is absent so these are the two buttons available so now what i can do is i can click present present absent present so you can see so easy to enter the data just on a single click rather than typing in manually so this is a simple example where you can do the automation and you can do a lot of more stuff if you know programming you can definitely uh, write more complex code so this is all about macros hope you like this video if you have any other questions or comments please post in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe see you in the next video